Hello everyone. So today I have Miss Kensington's one month update. This month has been definitely eye-opening. I didn't think I could do it many of nights, many of days. However, I can finally say that we are getting into a routine. Things are becoming a lot easier. I understand her more. <laughs> um, so I guess it's a, it's a learning curve. You know, she doesn't know me. I don't know her. Although she's lived inside me for almost 10 months. But we now are well acquainted and things are definitely getting easier. So if you are a first time mom or soon to be mom and you're seeing this, just know that it does get easier. Everyone tells you that. People tell me that but it will get easier. So Kensington's birth weight was a whopping eight pounds, four ounces. I cannot believe that I created such a large child. Um, she was chunky and puffy. When they put her on my chest, I was like, whoa, that, that child's got some weight to her. Um, she, I don't think she looked like either one of us when she came out I kind of looked at this child and was hmm trying to figure out who she looked like more but now that uh, she's less swollen some of the water weight's gone down I can definitely see where she looks like the both of us uh, she, uh, my whole family says she's a spitting image of me as a baby but I definitely see um, some traits of Mike she has his eye shape his ears uh, there was one night where I looked up at him like this I was laying on the couch and I looked into his eyes and I was like that's Kenzie so it's kind of fun to see her change and you know see who she's gonna look more like she started to bald a little bit so she has an old man uh, receding hairline it's kind of cute but the little girl's gotta have some bows on her head for now <laughs> until she gets her hair in looks like it might be like a light brown or blonde um she definitely has some beautiful long eyelashes. I hope that those um, stay. And her eye color has not come in yet either. It looks like it might be hazel um, or maybe a brown. They look like they might be on the darker side. So that's fun. We'll sh we should see in a few weeks what those are going to be. But she was eight pounds, four ounces when she was born. Her, uh, she lost I forget her exact weight when we went to her doctor's appointment so she was born on a Friday Friday morning and then on the following Tuesday we had her pediatrician appointment and she had lost a few ounces I think she was like maybe seven pounds ten ounces something like that um, so she was losing some weight but it was nothing substantial um, but as the weeks the week went on she lost more weight we actually went to the pediatrician because she got like a little bit of a skin rash on her um, we think it was just slight irritation because she took some newborn photos and I think maybe some of the outfits she was wearing who knows but uh, so we took her to the pediatrician and she had lost a full pound at that point they said you need to supplement I didn't really know what that meant they said you know if you have a bottle at home use that um, if you have some samples of formula here if not use this um, feed her till she's full I was clueless I, I really didn't know what that meant so I immediately called our lactation nurse from the hospital where we delivered and they said here's what you need to do go to the store get a preemie nipple and just give her some formula and come see me first thing tomorrow so if it wasn't for the lactation nurses i don't know what we would have done so uh, i tried to give her a bottle that night it went very horribly it was like a zero nipple and she just choked on it. it there was like milk everywhere i was oh my gosh i was devastated i was crying it's just it it wasn't going the way we had planned um, because when we when I got into you know trying to figure out how I wanted to feed her I really wanted to exclusively breastfeed that was really important to me just due to like the uh, nutritional values and you know things like that it was just really important so to see that you know my body had failed me um, 
it was very disappointing. Uh, I'm sure, you know, if you're a mother and you've gone through that, you understand exactly, you know, where I was at at that point. Uh, we had had some issues before that with just latching and extreme pain. So we kind of thought maybe something else was going on. So with working with the lactation nurse, we found out that she had a tongue tie, which apparently is very common nowadays. So we made an appointment with the ENT. Uh, this is now she was two weeks old and I think it was that Friday. So she, she was turning three weeks old when she got her tongue uh, tie clipped. So she got that fixed, she latched right away, everything you know looked good. So I was still, what I was doing was to help my supply, I was breastfeeding her, then pumping after to try to build my supply and then feeding her a bottle as well. So it was around the clock feeding, very stressful. Um, you can imagine I'm trying to adjust to a new baby, we're having feeding issues that are taking up a lot of time. All you want to do with your newborn is snuggle and I'm stuck to a breast pump and you know, feeding her a bottle. It was, it was just devastating to me. But the most important part was that she was being fed and she was gaining weight. Um, so let's see, we continue to work with the lactation nurse, um, but her transfer just wasn't there. Uh, and with me pumping, I, I now, I only pump maybe three ounces if, if that, and she's taking three ounce bottles every single time. So I'm still having to supplement a little bit with formula and now we're dealing with gas issues. So we're still working on it. She's, we've introduced a probiotic and what else? Gas drops, gripe water doesn't really work for us that well, we've realized. So we're still working on it and it's, it's going to be, um, it's going to be a journey, but we are getting through it. She's gaining weight. She is so heavy. At her one month appointment, she was eight pounds, 10 ounces. So from having lost a pound, so she was seven pounds, four ounces, all the way up to eight, 10 in just a few weeks. That was good news. Uh, the little stinker is still in her newborn clothes. Um, we ran out of newborn diapers, but I'm sure she can still wear newborn diapers barely wears ones and she is just so petite and so tiny but the pediatrician said that she's gonna be a little one um, so <laughs> Mike and I aren't that big of people we're not that tall so she's just gonna be a little shrimp <laughs> I hope she uh, has his metabolism and not mine because that will be a blessing so those are some of the issues that we've been working with other than that, um, good news is that we are on some kind of a schedule, which is so nice to have everything predictable to the most part, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a baby, you can't predict everything. But what we're doing is it is a feed, play, nap schedule, and she's only waking up once in the middle of the night. Um, we have a bath time routine as well. It starts at eight o'clock feed her at 8 30 she goes down by nine usually wakes up around one o'clock at night and then um five or six o'clock in the morning is or five or six no it's not five or six it used to be five or six six or seven is when we wake up so that's great um the gas issue though is keeping us a little bit awake in the middle of the night but we're working on that we have a chiropractor appointment next week. We're hoping, we've heard good things about that. So we're hoping that that, you know, kind of helps move things along. Probiotics, um, pretty much anything that you can think of, we are doing at this point to help her out because she's just in a lot of pain. I think once we get the gas controlled, she will be such a happy baby uh, because she loves her naps. Those, what, if we wait too long to put her down for her nap, she is angry, 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 angry. Um, but you know, we were watching her cues when she starts yawning a little bit. It's like, it's time to go in your swaddle. So we swaddle her. We have a swinging bassinet. It's a Greco dream bassinet thing. I don't know. Um, it, it's like, it has a bassinet and then you can take the bassinet off and put a swing. Um, it's, it's really cool because it's multi-purpose and it's not that big at all. 
So she goes in that with her swaddle and white noise and she just passes out um, with kind of this, I would say sleep training, but I say sleep training lightly because we're not doing cry it out. She's way too young for that. And I don't even think that's something that we're gonna do um, with her schedule and with what we're trying to implement. Um, we're hoping that we kind of lay the foundation for her just to automatically be a good sleeper. Babies are gonna be babies. So I don't know if that's necessarily gonna be flawless, but we're trying. So she goes um, into the bassinet and she's still a little awake. Sometimes she'll lay there for 20 minutes and then finally pass out, but she's not screaming. She's just self-soothing, hanging out, chilling, resting, doing what she does. So um, that is, once we catch her, put her down, she's good. Uh, Playtime, we have a little tummy time mat, but then she can also lay on her back and then look up and you know see a whole bunch of um, shapes and what is it on there? There's like those little like, hanging things. She loves that, absolutely loves that. Um, but we don't have a lot of awake time at this point because she loves her sleep and she's still pretty much sleeping through the night. So there's no need of me trying to keep her awake more than what she wants to. She has started smiling. Uh, it's the cutest thing ever because she doesn't really, uh, she's still trying to use her muscles in her mouth. So she's like, it's like a whole face movement, but it's the most adorable thing ever. Her eye colors is going to be, we don't know yet, maybe hazel. And then she's balding as well. And she looks, she looks kind of funny. We need to put headbands on her like 24 seven because it's just kind of patchy and funny looking, but all newborns go through it. So her, she does have hair underneath, looks to be possibly blonde. So we'll have to see. And did I mention she still wears her newborn clothes? Yep. So she's got a drawer full of zero to three months and then three to six months, but we're still stuck on newborn. And of course I'm not gonna buy her any more newborn clothes because the second I do that, she'll already be out of them. Um, we read Good Night Moon every night. This is our book. So it has, if you're not familiar with the book, little black and white pages. And there's been a few times at night that I've actually caught her looking at this uh, because she can only see in black and white right now. So she loves this book when she's not already passed out. So what we're doing with her bedtime routine, let me see if I have the book. So as far as bedtime routines go, we are following this um, mom's on call. I know it's backwards, but Moms on call, zero to six months. They outline um, a schedule for every month or for, you know, the different stages. And she is two weeks to three months. I don't know exactly where the schedule is. But what it is, is we start bedtime routine at eight o'clock at night. We do a bath, we have music playing. Um, we try to keep everything as consistent as possible so that she starts to realize, okay, this is music's playing, I'm in the bath, I'm gonna get my bottle and then I'm gonna go to bed and it's gonna be the best thing ever. Um, so she loves bath time. We use the Young Living Seedling line. It's, um, they're natural products and it has lavender in it so that calms her. Then we do a lavender massage after the bath. She absolutely loves being in the water, but the second we take her out, she starts screaming. So that is going to be something that we work on. We might end up getting like a little space heater for the bathroom so it stays warm and then not take her out of the bathroom until she's got her PJs on and is in a warm blanket. Is uh, winter time our bathroom gets really cold so I'm not looking forward to that and trying to give her baths every night uh, but she's pretty good about going to bed uh, we are thankful that she's only waking once during the night with her gas and possible reflux issue she's a little fussy and it's a little difficult to get her to go back down but once we do she's good she's good I mean we can't complain um, but yes, this schedule and then before that book, the schedule in this book, because we had feeding issues and 
it was very stressful having to do everything. I didn't really implement a schedule until last week, so she was a month old. But cherish the first six weeks. This outlines kind of a beginner schedule as far as your newborn up to six weeks. We did kind of implement this. I mean, may, possibly the reason why she's only waking up once through the night is because we did this first and then mom's on call. But either way, I believe in a routine. Uh, one thing that we're having to do is with the routine, we have to make it fit our lifestyle as well. Um, sorry. I just, I'm not the type of person that's built where I can stay home every weekend and it's going to be around a schedule 24 seven. Now, if I find out that, you know, going to the grocery store or going to target and being out all weekend is affecting her sleep, then that might be the time to reassess things. But what we do is we have an up a baby, um, stroller and it has a bassinet so this weekend we went to target we got our coffee uh put her in the bassinet with her swaddle just like she would for nap time at home and she has white noise so we have a white noise app so i played it on my phone so we're strolling through target with a bassinet and white noise playing and people are looking at us kind of weird but she took her nap we got our shopping done and that was great. It was a pretty successful day. I was pretty proud that we were able to kind of compromise and get things done that way. Uh, another thing, so with her feeding, I am exclusively pumping at this point because I need to know how much she's getting, especially with trying to keep her sleeping longer through the night and just supply in general. It's too it's too iffy in order for me just to breastfeed her and not really know and then try to give her you know formula after that and have her throw up so pumping and then whatever I pump I give her if I need to make it up in formula like let's say I'm an ounce short and then I'll add formula to that as well so with having to pump around the clock you would wonder well you don't want to be stuck at home what do you do so I took it a step further and I ordered a car plug for my breast pump. I use the Spectre 2 and then I bought the free knee cups that go in your bra. So I literally, when we're out and about, oh, and I have the Medela um, wipes for your pump equipment. So when we're out and about, I literally sit in the back of the car and I pump. Yeah. And your breast milk's good for about four hours out, you know, and like out in the air. So if we're still out, then that goes into our next bottle because she eats every three hours at this point. So I'm pretty proud of myself for being that creative and just making it work. I think at this point, that's what it is. I mean, for me, I cannot be home and just feeding, pumping, feeding, pumping, feeding, pumping. I've, I've got to be able to live my life and go out and about. So I've found ways to adapt, especially with the feeding to our lifestyle yep so that has definitely been a blessing I'm thankful that that has been an option for us and her napping uh, I think at this point once we get the gas under control she'll definitely be a lot happier of a baby not that she's not happy but she is a little bit more fussy I think than most um let's see what else what else let's see we have our routine our dogs so we have three dogs and my niece brought over it was the cutest thing so she printed out a photo of Kenzie when she was in the hospital and then we gave her a blanket that Kenzie had used so before we had come home she brought the photo to the dogs and <laughs> the blanket so that they could smell the baby we came home and the dogs just knew they w they weren't jumping on us they weren't barking they were kind of just staying away they they knew and it was the craziest thing uh, i feel bad for them sometimes because they don't get as much as attention as they used to they were they still kind of are but they're second children because kenzie obviously comes first and she is a human child <laughs> but they're not allowed on the couch anymore and they know that 
Um, occasionally they'll sneak up on the couch, but for the most part, they, they know their boundaries. Um, when we come home with a baby, let's say we've been out all day and we bring the car seat in, quiet. It's, it's so crazy that they just know. Um, Nala, our little English bulldog, loves Kenzie. Uh, the second we brought her home, she tried to like get her feet and like just slobber all over them. I'm like, oh my gosh. Or she would grab our leg and kind of try to hump us when we're holding the baby. Um, because she's like, that's my baby, that's my baby. It was the cutest thing. But I've been pleasantly surprised at how quickly they've adapted to her. And um, hopefully soon, you know, we get more adjusted and, you know, can kind of incorporate them more so in our schedule. But for the most part, they are staying in the kitchen so that they're away from her. Uh, I don't know how she's going to react to dog hair or have allergic reactions. So we try to keep her out of the nursery and keep them out of her nursery and keep them out of the bedroom um, at this point. So that's the dogs. Um, for us, I think postpartum, I still have maybe 20 pounds, a little more to lose uh, to be back to pre-pregnancy weight, but I'm not rushing it at this point because of my supply being such an issue. I don't want to do anything to jeopardize that and not be able to breastfeed or give her the breast milk that I have so eventually that will come off and everything will be fine I'm, I'm not too worried about it with being able to give her a bottle at this point though it is very freeing I'm trying to make light of a you know a, a disappointing situation because I you know, did want to exclusively breastfeed her and that was something that was important to me. She is getting breast milk, so I'm thankful of, of that. Um, but being able to give her a bottle, it's nice because on the weekends, when Mike's home, I have a little bit of help. He's able to give her the bottle and I can pump or, you know, do something else and not have to try to multitask. Because uh, at this point, Kenzie goes on, I put my leg, I sit in this chair, I put my legs up and I sit her like this and then I pump while I feed her the bottle that's what works for us and half the time 20 minutes we're done um but yes being able to give her a bottle is very liberating <laughs> um at this point so i am kind of enjoying being able to have a little bit of help with someone feeding her she did go to her first daycare uh day uh, i think last week so she's now, Friday, she's going to be six weeks old, so in a couple of days. But she was five weeks old. She went to daycare for the first time because I had my follow-up appointment with the OB. Everything is good. Um, but I just didn't want to take her because I, if she was to decide to have a tantrum and I couldn't control her, I just didn't want to be in the doctor's office alone on an exam table. That just wouldn't be good for anyone. So she went to daycare. Uh, she had her bottle. Uh, she had to play a little bit and then she took the best nap that she has taken in um, at that point a long time. She slept from 12.30 I think or maybe 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock and that was amazing. So we woke her up for our next feeding and then we went home and we were just a happy baby. It was perfect. I think so at this point that is I think that's all that I have that has been going on so I'm gonna try to do these monthly and I'll try to make some more videos about the products that we've used because let me tell you I thought I had everything on my baby list and nope Amazon Prime lots of things have been coming to our doorstep that I didn't even think that we would need so that's been fun I'll do an update on products that we have uh, loved and not loved and things that no one would even tell you to get but you probably already need so um thanks again everyone i'll talk to you next time